Well, are you ready to get into Yah's Word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6. We're going to begin with verse 4 in just a moment. And I've entitled this message today, Loving Elohim. We're going to talk about how to love Elohim. Is loving Elohim just a feeling or an emotion? Is it just some sort of affection? Or does it go much deeper than that? That's what we're going to be talking about. Let's get right into our verses today. Hero Israel, Yah our Elohim, Yah is one, Echad. And you shall love Yah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. And so we see a commandment in the scripture that the people of Elohim are to love Him with all your heart. In other words, with all your spirit, with all your being, with your mind and your will and your emotions, and with all your might, with your physical strength. There is to be no compromise in the love of Yah's people for Him. He wants His people to love Him with everything they are and everything they have. Verse 6, And these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart. So here we see the connection between loving Yah and His words, or loving Yah and obedience. His words are to be in our hearts, and you shall impress them upon your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up, and shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And so the word of Elohim must be the central theme of the believer's Life. We're going to see that to Elohim, love equals obedience. And when we know that love equals obedience, then we can ask the question, are we being obedient with all of our heart? Are we being obedient with all of our being? And are we being obedient with all of our might? Now let's look at verse 17. Diligently. Guard the commands of Yah your Elohim and his witnesses and his laws which he has commanded you, and you shall do what is right and good in the eyes of Yah, that it might be well with you, and you shall go in and possess the good land of which Yah swore to your fathers to drive out all your enemies from before you. He'll fight your battles for you, as Yah has spoken. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, What is the meaning of the witnesses and the laws and the right rulings which Yah our Elohim has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, We were slaves of Paro, of Pharaoh, in Mitzrayim, in Egypt, and Yah brought us out of Mitzrayim with a strong hand. And Yah sent signs and wonders, great and grievous, upon Mitzrayim, upon Paro, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there to bring us in, to give us the land of which he swore to our fathers. And Yah commanded us to do all these laws, to fear Yah our Elohim for our good always to keep us alive as it is today. And it is righteousness for us when we guard to do all this command before Yah our Elohim as He has commanded us. And so before Yeshua's time, then a person would obtain righteousness through obedience to the Torah. Now, after Yeshua lived and died on the tree and was buried and was raised, our righteousness is through belief in Him, but it's unto obedience. 
The obedience part has not been removed in the new covenant. But originally, righteousness came through obedience to Torah. Now let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 4, and we'll begin with verse 1. And this is going to tell us that Yah commanded the children of Israel not to add to the Torah or take away from the Torah. It says, And now, O Israel, listen to the laws and the right rulings which I am teaching you to do so that you live and shall go in and possess the land which Yah Elohim of your fathers is giving you. So the Torah was given to bring life and blessing so that you live and possess, possess the blessing. Do not add to the word which I command you and do not take away from it so as to guard the commands of Yah, your Elohim, which I am commanding you. And so we know religion has both added to and taken away from the Torah. People who are bound in religion are disobedient to the Torah. And so in being disobedient, in other words, complying with the additions and the subtractions, then they are not loving Elohim the way Elohim wants to be loved, and that is through obedience to his written Torah. Look at verse 5. It says, See, I have taught you laws and right rulings, as Yah, my Elohim, commanded me, this is Moshe speaking, to do thus in the land which you go to possess. You shall guard and do them. For this is your wisdom. Obedience to the Torah makes a person wise. And your understanding. Obedience to the Torah brings understanding. Before the eyes of the peoples who hear all these laws, and they shall say, this is their witness, their testimony of those who follow Torah, only a wise and understanding people is this great nation. So obedience to the commandments makes a person wise and full of understanding, and in essence makes them part of a great family of believers. For what great nation is there which has Elohim so near to it, as Yah our Elohim is to us whenever we call on Him? Because of obedience to Torah, Yah says, I'm going to hear and answer your prayers. And what great nation is there that has such laws and righteous right rulings like all this Torah which I set before you this day? Only guard yourself, be careful, and guard your life diligently, lest you forget the words your eyes have seen, and lest they turn aside from your heart all the days of your life. Don't forget the commandments. Don't forget the words of Elohim. Don't let those commandments turn aside from your heart. And you shall make them known to your children and your grandchildren. The day when you stood before Yah your Elohim in Choreb, Yah said to me, Assemble the people to me, and I make them hear my words so that they learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth and teach them to their children. And you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire to the heart of the heavens, darkness, cloud, and thick darkness. And Yah spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard a voice of words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. And He made known to you His covenant, his marriage arrangement. He was marrying the children of Israel, and he had a marriage arrangement, a covenant. And what did that covenant consist of? It says, and he made known to you his covenant, which he commanded you to do the 10 words of the 10 commandments. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone. So he was marrying the children of Israel, and the ten words were to be the marital vows. And so Yah's side of the covenant was to hear the prayers of the people and to fulfill His promises. And the people 
were then to obey the commandments, the Ten Commandments being the covenant commandments. There were other laws and right rulings also given, and those laws and right rulings bring about set-apartness unto Yah. Verse 14, And Yah commanded me at that time to teach you laws and right rulings for you to do them in the land which you pass over to possess. Look at verse 23. Guard yourselves lest you forget the covenant. Don't forget the ten words. Don't forget the ten commandments. And religion today has, in a great regard, forgotten the Ten Commandments. Christianity, in a great regard, has abolished the Ten Commandments, especially in these modern doctrines of demons where they say, don't do anything. If you try to obey the Bible, then you've fallen from grace and now you're just a law keeper. And you know what we say, if you're not a law keeper, what are you? You're a law breaker. The scripture says, guard yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of Yah your Elohim, which he made with you, and shall make for yourselves a carved image in any form, as Yah your Elohim has commanded you. Don't be idolatrous. Don't worship false mighty ones. For Yah your Elohim is a consuming fire, a jealous ale. He loves you with a passion. He wants all of you. He wants all of your love. He wants your complete obedience. And he's not going to share you with false mighty ones. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. And let's briefly read through the marital vows of the covenant. It says, And Moshe called all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the laws and right rulings which I speak in your hearing today, and you shall learn them. And guard to do them. Be careful to do them. Yah, your Elohim, made a covenant with us in Koreb. Yah did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive. Yah spoke with you face to face on the mountain from the midst of the fire. I stood between Yah and you at that time to declare to you the word of Yah. For you were afraid because of the fire, and you did not go up the mountain, saying, I am Yah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You have no other mighty ones against my face. That's the first covenant commandment. Verse 8, you do not make for yourselves a carved image, any likeness of which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, Yah, your Elohim, am a jealous ale, visiting the crookedness of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving commitment to thousands, to those who love me, notice, and guard my commands. So that is the second of the marital vows of the covenant commandments. The third is, you do not bring the name of Yah, your Elohim, to naught, for Yah does not leave him unpunished who brings his name to naught. The fourth is, guard the Sabbath day to set it apart, as Yah your Elohim commanded you, six days you labor and shall do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yah your Elohim. You do not do any work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates, so that your male servant and your female servant rest as you do. And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Mitzrayim, and that Yah, your Elohim, brought you out from there by a strong hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, Yah, your Elohim, commanded you to perform the Sabbath day. And then the fifth of the commandments is, respect your father and your mother 
as Yah, your Elohim, has commanded you, so that your days are prolonged, so that it is well with you on the soil which Yah, your Elohim, is giving you. The sixth of the marital vows is this, you do not murder. The seventh, you do not commit adultery. The eighth, you do not steal. The ninth, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor. And the tenth, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor do you desire your neighbor's house, his field, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. These words Yah spoke to all your assembly in the mountain from the midst of the fire of the cloud and of the thick darkness with a loud voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. And so the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words are the covenant commandments of the original covenant, but they're also the covenant commandments of the new covenant. If you want to keep covenant with Elohim, you must obey the Ten Commandments. All right. Now I want you to see the heart of Yah, His desire for having a people who would love him the way he wants to be loved through obedience. We find this in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 29. It says, Oh, that they had such a heart in them to fear me and to guard all my commands always so that it might be well with them and with their children forever. So he has this desire, this this longing to be loved through obedience, to have a people who have a desire, a heart, to obey Him and to walk in His ways. And then let's look at verse 32. It says, And you shall guard to do as Yah your Elohim has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Notice, walk in all the ways which Yah your Elohim has commanded you. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Yah wants us to walk with him in his ways so that you live and it be well with you and you shall prolong your days in the land which you possess. Hallelujah. So go with me over to Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're going to pick up with verse 12. And this is going to tell us that if Israel loved Yah through obedience, then Yah would love them in the context of the covenant in return. It says, And it shall be, because you hear these right rulings and shall guard and do them, that Yah your Elohim shall guard with you the covenant and the loving commitment which he swore to your father. So he's going to fulfill his side of the covenant. If you'll fulfill your side, he's going to be an Elohim to you. And he's going to show loving commitment to you for the sake of the promise that he made to the fathers. Verse 13, And shall love you and bless you and increase you. So covenant love is coming your way. Why? Because you obey the commandments. And shall bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your land, your grain and your new wine, and your oil, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flock in the land of which he swore to your fathers to give you. Blessed are you above all peoples. There is not going to be a barren man or a barren woman among you or among your livestock. We're talking about covenant love. And Yah shall turn away from you all sickness and put on you none of the evil diseases of Mitzrayim, which you have known, but he shall put them on those who hate you, and you shall consume all the peoples whom Yah, your Elohim, is delivering over to you. Your eyes shall not pardon them. In other words, Yah is going to fight your battles for you. And do not serve their mighty ones, for that is a snare to you. When you say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, I am unable to drive them out. Do not be afraid of them. Remember well what Yah your Elohim did to Paro and to all Mitzrayim, 
the great trials which your eyes saw and the signs and the wonders, the strong hand and the outstretched arm by which Yah your Elohim brought you out. Yah your Elohim does so to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. And Yah your Elohim also sends the hornet among them until those who are left, who hide themselves from you, are destroyed. Do not be afraid of them, for Yah your Elohim, the great and awesome Ale, is in your midst. In other words, He is a covenant Elohim. He is walking with you. He is showing covenant love to you. He will fight your battles for you. And he will bring you into that good land that he promised your fathers. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. We'll pick up with verse 1. And obviously, these promises are made to original Israel. When you believe in Yeshua, you are grafted into believing Israel. So these principles also apply to us who are believers in Yeshua under the new covenant. But... Yah is going to say here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, when you are blessed with my covenant love, when I pour out my covenant love upon you, then don't forget me. He says, guard to do every command which I command you today, that you might live and shall increase and go in and shall possess the land of which Yah swore to your fathers. In other words, if you obey the Torah, the Torah was sent to bring life and blessing. And you shall remember that Yah, your Elohim, led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, prove you, to know what is in your heart, whether you guard His commands or not, whether you love Him or not. Because to love Him is to obey Him. And He humbled you and let you suffer hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, to make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of Yah. We live when we obey the commandments. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Here's some more covenant love. Thus you shall know in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so Yah your Elohim disciplines you. Therefore you shall, notice, guard the commands of Yah your Elohim, that means obey them, to walk in his ways and to fear him. For Yah your Elohim is bringing you into a good land, a land of streams of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you eat bread without scarcity, in which you do not lack at all, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you dig copper, and you shall eat and be satisfied and shall bless Yah your Elohim for the good land which He has given you, be on guard, notice, lest you forget Yah, your Elohim, by not guarding His commands. When you disobey, when you do not guard His commands, you are forgetting Yah, your Elohim. It says, be on guard, lest you forget Yah, your Elohim, by not guarding His commands, and His right rulings, and His laws, which I command you today lest you eat and shall be satisfied and build lovely houses and shall dwell in them and your herds and your flocks increase and your silver and your gold are increased and all that you have is increased. See, that's covenant love. That your heart then becomes lifted up, pride. And you forget Yah your Elohim who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from the house of bondage. You forget that you were a slave in Mitzrayim. As it relates to the new covenant, you forget that you were a slave to sin and that Yah has delivered you, who led you through that great and awesome wilderness, fiery serpents and scorpions and thirst, where there was no water, 
who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, in order to humble you and try you to do you good in the end. You then shall say in your heart, My power and the strength of my hand have made for me this wealth. But you shall remember Yah, your Elohim, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth in order to establish His covenant, which He swore to your fathers as it is today. When you obey Him, He will bless you and He will establish that covenant that He has made with you. He swore that covenant to the fathers. You will be blessed, but remember, it is He who is giving you power to gain wealth and to be blessed and prosperous. Verse 19, And it shall be if you by any means forget Yah, your Elohim, and follow other mighty ones. In other words, you're untrustworthy within the context of the covenant, of the marriage, and you go after false mighty ones and serve them and bow yourself to them. I have warned you this day that you shall certainly perish like the nations which Yah is destroying before you. So you are to perish because you did not obey the voice of Yah, your Elohim. You didn't love him the way he wanted to be loved in the marriage. And that's through obedience. Now let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 28. We'll pick up with verse 1 and we'll look at the blessings of obedience and the curses of disobedience. It says, And it shall be, if you diligently obey the voice of Yah your Elohim, to guard to do all His commands which I command you today, notice what happens, that Yah your Elohim shall set you high above all the nations of the earth. So you can apply these same principles to your life as a believer in Yeshua under the new covenant. If you obey the commandments, then Yah is going to set you high. He's going to set you on high. Verse 2, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of Yah, your Elohim. Blessed are you in the city, and blessed are you in the field. Blessed is the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your livestock, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed is your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed are you when you come in, and blessed are you when you go out. Yah causes your enemies who rise against you to be smitten before your face. They come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Yah commands the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand and shall bless you in the land which Yah your Elohim is giving you. Yah does establish you as a set-apart people to Himself as He has sworn to you. If you guard the commands of Yah, your Elohim, and walk in His ways. And all peoples of the earth shall see that the name of Yah is called upon you, and they shall be afraid of you. And Yah shall make you to have plenty of what is good in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground, in the land of which Yah swore to your fathers to give you, Yah opens to you His good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations, but you do not borrow. And Yah shall make you the head and not the tail, and you shall be only on top and not be beneath. Notice, if you obey the commands of Yah, your Elohim, which I command you today to guard and do. And do not turn aside from any of the words which I am commanding you today, right or left, to go after other mighty ones to serve them. And it shall be if you do not obey the voice of Yah, your Elohim, to guard, to do all His commands, and His laws, which I command you today, that all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed are you in the city, and cursed are you in the field. Cursed is your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed is the fruit of your body, 
and the fruit of your land, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Cursed are you when you come in and cursed are you when you go out. Yah sends on you the curse, the confusion, and the rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the evil of your doings, your disobedience, by which you have forsaken me. And so by disobeying, you are forsaking Yah. And there are many, many more curses there that you can read. But the point is, when we obey the commandments, then we are blessed. He causes the blessing to pursue us and to overtake us. When we disobey, then we open ourselves up to curses coming our way. And then we want to see in Deuteronomy chapter 30, this principle of teshuvah that we talk a lot about, turning to the master in obedience, forsaking the disobedience, and turning to the master in obedience. It says, and it shall be when all these words come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you shall bring them back to your heart among all the nations where Yah your Elohim drives you, and shall turn back to Yah your Elohim and obey his voice according to all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your being, you and your children. Let me stop there and say they were driven out into the nations because of their disobedience. And this is Moshe saying when you're out there in the nations and you remember the words of the blessing and the curse that was set before you. And you turn back to the master in obedience. And you're sincere in your repentance. You turn back and you obey his voice. Notice it says, with all your heart, and with all your being, you and your children, you remember we established earlier that we're to obey or to love Him with all of our hearts and with all of our beings and with all of our strength. Repentance is turning away from disobedience and turning back to the Master with full obedience. Verse 3, Then Yah your Elohim shall turn back your captivity and shall have compassion on you. He shall turn back and gather you from all the peoples where Yah, your Elohim, has scattered you. So if you turn back to Him, then He's going to turn back your captivity. And He's going to gather you up. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under the heavens, from there Yah, your Elohim, does gather you, and from there He does take you, and Yah, your Elohim, shall bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, notice, and you shall possess it. And he shall do good to you and increase you more than your fathers. And Yah, your Elohim, shall circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love Yah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being so that you might live. And so this is a promise. It's actually a prophetic word in the Torah concerning New Covenant believers that Yah is going to circumcise their hearts, those who believe in Yeshua, to love Him the way He wants to be loved, through obedience. He's going to give them what they need to be successful within the context of the covenant, to be able to do what the original covenant people failed at, and that is to obey Him to have the want to heart, I want to obey, and to have the power then to be obedient, to be successful in the marriage. And so it says, And Yah your Elohim shall circumcise your heart, He's going to do it, and the heart of your seed, notice, to love Yah, in other words, to obey Him, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being, so that you might live. And Yah your Elohim shall put all these curses on your enemies 
and on those who hate you, who persecuted you, and you shall turn back and obey the voice of Yah and do all his commands which I command you today. So we see the fulfillment of this prophecy that Yah said, I'm going to circumcise the hearts of my people. In other words, believers in Yeshua under the new covenant. We see this fulfillment in Colossians chapter 2, beginning with verse 11. In him, in Yeshua, you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah. So this is not a physical circumcision, but a spiritual circumcision. Messiah is the circumciser. It says, having been buried with him in immersion, in water immersion, in which you also were raised with him through the belief in the working of Elohim, who raised him from the dead. And so we have in the new covenant the better promises. We're going to read about the better covenant and the better promises here in the book of Hebrews in just a moment. The better promises are those promises from Yah where he promises to give us all that we need to be successful within the context of the covenant or the marriage. He's going to give us the want to heart where we want to be obedient and he's going to give us his spirit. He's going to put his spirit within us and his spirit is that medium through which we receive the power from Yah to be obedient. You just finished watching part one of Loving Elohim, where we laid out from the original Hebrew scriptures the definition of love as it pertains to the expectation of Elohim. How does Elohim see love? Well, we saw in the scripture that love equals obedience. The question that we have in part two is, does that message of love that leads to obedience change in the new covenant? Does Yeshua teach something different? Do the emissaries teach something different? Is it just about some mental acknowledgement that Yeshua is the Messiah and that's all there is? Or is the scripture plain that this message of loving Yah the way he wants to be loved through obedience is consistent throughout all of the Bible? Will you be sure to watch part two because it's going to be a powerful conclusion to the foundation that we have already laid in the scriptures. Hallelujah.